Hey everyone, so we had a question posted to the Discord, and um, so I wanted to kind of show a little bit of an example of some of the techniques that you probably uh, covered or, or probably picked up in 3D modeling. Um, but, you know, if it's been a while since you had the class or, you know, there's a lot to take in in that class. So it's hard to remember all the stuff that we cover um, just because there's a lot involved. And we use two different software applications. It's a whole thing. So um, basically, uh, one of our classmates was asking about connecting two objects and kind of uh, bridging between them and how to connect them. Uh, the big thing to keep in mind is if in Max a point won't weld or something won't connect or something won't uh, kind of go together the way you expect there's almost all there's always a reason i was gonna say almost but that's not really true there's always a reason why it won't do it now it generally is because the math doesn't work out and so there's something kind of funky happening um i mentioned i, I kind of mentioned it logically i think in the post but um logically doesn't mean it makes sense to us. It makes sense to the computer. Um, so here I have just two primitive objects that I've modeled. First things first, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn on edged faces so we can see the geometry better. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I think I'll probably grab my box here and just add a few more partitions because right now it's just one by one by one and that's a little bit, uh, a little low. Otherwise, I'm going to have the entire surface of the box connecting and I want a smaller piece. Okay, so I would say um, if the number of partitions is very different like this, um, you can have a, some funky geometry. And if the hole you're connecting to is a very different shape, so if I wanted to like connect this part of the box to this part of my sphere at the top, um, I'll have some odd shading and different things happening because it's not a square to square. Or if I go from here to here, it's going to look fine. Um, again, just kind of depends on what you're making. Points like the top and the bottom of these spheres aren't very good for modeling. In fact, unless you're making something that needs that geometry, spheres are kind of lousy choices. So even if I wanted to make like a human head, um, I was modeling a character, I would not use a sphere. Um, in fact, they actually have a modifier, and I was a little off topic, uh, here called Spherify, which can actually turn an object into a sphere. Oh, well, it's not going to work on the sphere. Let me grab the box. So uh, if I were going to model, like I said, a character's head, I would use a spherified box rather than a ball because it's going to give me a better geometry. Like three by three by three is not very good um, because again, I don't have that middle line where something, if it were an even number, like if I did six by six by six or four by four by four, you can see we get a more even look. And in fact, the more partitions, the nice and rounder the sphere is, this thing's set to like 32. So if I bumped this up to 12 by 12 by 12 and turn off edge faces, there's going to be still a little bit of shading weirdness because it was a ball. But look here, if you see, that sphere is just as round as the original, but the geometry is vastly different. So, again, just another kind of trick if you're, if you're trying to make something in Max. Um, a spherified box will give you nice square geometry um, versus um, a actual sphere which has these weird poles now the one thing that's nice about the pre-made spheres is if you get like a spherical map from nasa or something it'll fit this perfectly so you can get a high resolution map of like mars and throw it on that ball and it'll look fantastic um where this one the the uew mapping is totally incorrect for that uh anyway so let's go ahead and just go back to a lower resolution model here and we can either keep sphere fire or not. I'm going to turn it off. And then this one, I'm going to go with a lower resolution here as well, or a lower uh, number of segments. It doesn't have to match perfectly because that's okay. Uh, so we can kind of see what's happening. But I do want kind of something closer. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, kind of hard to tell maybe what's happening, the more complex it is. All right, so let's say I want to connect these two objects together um, with the... Uh, uh, like in the middle here. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is these are just primitive objects and primitive objects you can't really edit other than modifying their parameters. So I can change the parameters of this or this, but I can't turn it into something more complex. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this guy to edible poly. 
Um, you'll see also there's editable mesh. Editable mesh is what most objects will come in as and export as because most things are triangular based. Edible mesh is a triangle based um, model. But Edible Poly is the, the supported uh, version. So all the new tools and fancy things work in Edit Poly, not Edit Mesh. Um, so you want to pick it. All right, so now I can pick the piece I want. Um, now the easiest way to kind of connect two things is you have to have a hole. Um, surface geometry to surface geometry doesn't really play nicely. The other thing too, this is a completely separate object, so Max doesn't really know necessarily how to connect them. If you're wanting to connect two separate objects, you actually have to use like a Boolean function. So I have to come over here and go to like compound objects and do pro Boolean and like pick this other object. Now, okay, it didn't show up anything because this other object, of course, is not intersecting with this one. So let me go ahead and move it over. And you'll kind of see what I do here. Pro Boolean. Boom. Now you can see it's basically chopped the one piece out of the other. Now this works really cool and really easy if you're trying to do something like that shape. But it's ugly geometry. So if I were trying to bring this into a game or convert this into something, if I wanted to bring it in a ZBrush for playing with it further... Uh, that's a weird and, and nasty geometry. Um, this surface up here is going to have all kinds of crazy lines in it. Um, it's going to be funky because these two shapes really don't match. So, well, if it's a simple combination, Boolean's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, again, depends on what you're trying to do. For some things, like if I wanted a box with a sphere cut out of it, Boolean would be the way to go, right? Um, because I can create that geometry pretty easily. And you can't always manually go back and clean it up. But again, um, even then, these two objects became one object. So we can also, let's go ahead and convert this back to Edible Poly. Because right now it's set to a Boolean object. And I'm just going to come down and attach the second object. So attach will allow you to take two pieces and make them one object. Now this doesn't weld them or connect them. There's still two separate elements here, right? Uh, again, if I go underneath element, you can see one element, two elements. So there's two separate elements, but they are attached as one object. So if I were to move this, you can see they are together. Um, this is very common, like if you see a character from a video game, Often a video game character is split up in pieces. Sometimes like the hands could be one piece, the arms could be one element, the body could be one element, glasses on a character's face could be an element, things like that. But we don't want elements, we want fusion, we want them connected. So I'm going to just delete that circle, or that hole there. I'm gonna come over here to my sphere and I'm just going to delete that one there. So I have two holes, okay? Now I can go into border, which selects all of the edges of a hole. Now if you don't have a hole in your object, border doesn't do anything. So keep that in mind, it only works with holes. But I could grab this hole and this hole, and there's a tool over here called bridge, which I can actually bring up. Now if I just click the big button, it'll automatically do it, but if I bring up this thing, you can actually get these different options. So if it's not directly across from it, if it's twisted or turned, or if you need to twist or turn it, again, you can do that. Oops, I accidentally clicked. Um, so like I can do things like play around with some of the settings. I can add some segments in the middle. That allows me again to kind of refine that connection a little bit more, depending on what you're trying to do with it. Um, again, you can kind of play around with where you want that bulge to happen at. I don't know if I want that really. Um, whether or not it's smooth, you can also twist it, which is kind of cool. Now again, if you twist it a little bit too much, again, depending on how complicated the hole is, um, it may or may not work very well. So again, you can also, there's a second twist there you can play with. Okay, so you can see I've connected the two things with bridge. All right. Now they are, in essence, one piece. Now this is not a very good uh, connection because you can see here, this is not in the middle of my sphere. My sphere actually, if you look, so let's grab this guy and just align it. In the 
middle here still didn't quite align I think it aligned with the not with the box but with the uh, actual objects orientation point but that's okay that's fine we can just eyeball it no big deal but for this if I wanted it to kind of again match I would probably want to delete all of these things now this again is not going to be the same number of segments so um, it's going to again do its best to calculate how to attach these two borders together so I got them selected and click bridge again I like the little box because it gives me more control so you can see here it's created kind of some new cuts in it to allow for that extra geometry All right. and that's gonna look nicer because it's in the center of the sphere so you can see I got a piece that kind of makes a little bit more logical sense um, I do have a triangle here so you can see ideally the geometry should be the same so if I cut another line through here it should connect if you want it really good geometry triangles like that those weird spots where it connects if I add like a turbo smooth modifier to this new shape now um, can kind of sometimes add some weird shading just like these points up here anytime there's triangles you can kind of sometimes get some weirdness um, again see that weird shading right here so it looks like this one's fine we can do a few more iterations and it'll clean that up a little bit but then we are left with a really complicated object of course right um, we turn on back on my edge face as you can see this is a pretty complex 3d model now but you could always add like a optimized modifier on top of this guy to try to low res it back down or even you know uh, retopologize it so so if I can optimize, optimize will make ugly geometry. It'll make geometry look the same and be low res, uh, but look just like high res, but it also is nasty looking. Um, again, this is a nice geometry. It's just way too complex. And even here you can see it's actually fixed the triangle problem and converted the triangle to squares. Oops, I'm going wrong direction. Bump that up too much, it'll crash my machine. <laughs> So you can see it's actually tried to fix that triangle by converting it to a square. Um, but unless you put it high enough, you can sort of see that weird pinching where that conversion's taking place. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You know, this is only one way to kind of do things. I'm just hitting undo right now. Let's see if I have enough undos to go back to the original shape. Perfect. So you could also stitch them together or actually hand connect them as well. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways of doing that. So I go back to border. If I grab one of them and hold down shift and pull over, I can actually create new geometry. Now again, you can see this geometry doesn't match up exactly. Okay, So I would have to maybe hand weld it and figure out what I'm going to do with these extra points. Again, if I'm going to cut a new line in or how do I want to deal with that all right again that's just selecting the border holding shift and pulling it over so you can actually hand connect them I could also just do target weld and grab this point and weld it to this point now that's gonna shoot it over there all crazy <coughs> because it's gonna move to it so again I could hand stitch these together as well so whether that's the right choice or not depending on what you're trying to make or do uh, that's definitely up to debate so you can see I'm getting some funky geometry doing it this way but it works right again because I have two holes target welds working just fine if I were to try to weld a point that didn't make sense like over here it wouldn't let me do it okay so keep that in mind trying to figure out exactly kind of where the best one to weld to what is can be a little tricky too so if I'm just gonna connect these over here again hard to say what I'm trying to model right so now I still have these holes so we want to kind of get rid of them but I could do again I could go into border and uh, border is not going to work I guess because of the funkiness of the shape but I could go to edge 
see if it'll let me select these three and let's see if cap will work do, 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 do. where are you cap 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 actually it might be in a border so okay so see that oh but look see it went, looks like it went ahead and capped everything but the geometry looks okay so it looks like it figured out how to cap it all right You can see we did cap. Now again, there's some weird shading because the shading numbers don't match up. So if I wanted to fix that shading, of course, I need to go back and select my surfaces. Let's say select all of these and come down here to again my smoothing groups, add them all to one, and now I'll have a nice smoother edge there. Again, we turn off edge face, it's a little easier to see. Because one doesn't match up with the box, that's how I have that hard edge there. Or if I were to grab everything, and let's just do clear all make it all one again it's going to try to blend it all as smoothly as possible so again just a couple of different ways that you can connect some spots so hopefully that helps uh, let me know if it doesn't um, or if there's anything else anyone's having trouble with